We were at the beaches the last time we saw you out in western, southwestern Ontario, but we're back here in eastern Ontario, ready to head north. How's it going, babe? Going good. All packed up. <laughs> Perfect. We're ready to go. <laughs> Did you ever wonder how we um, had to clean this really tall and big windshield? The struggle is real. <laughs> Yummy. That's a big salad. Nice salad. One of the best things about traveling along Ontario roads and highways is they always have these little rest areas. It's where we just had stopped and had lunch. They've always got sort of some picnic tables. They've got some restrooms. They've got picnic tables in the shade over there. And it just makes a nice safe spot to pull over on the side of the highway. A uh, comfortable place to have some lunch, relieve yourself if you don't have a bathroom on board, and then carry on. a pretty good spot, eh, bud? You know what? This is a pretty <laughs> awesome sunset spot. So we are in um, Samuel de Champlain Provincial Park. It's just outside of Mattawa, Ontario. We've never been here before. It's actually super quiet. They only have one section open and it's normally electric sites, but something is going on with their electric and they're updating it or so. Anyway, so everything's non-electric, which is fine with us. We don't ever look for an electric site, but we're here for the next two days and we're pretty happy because it's pretty peaceful here. Very peaceful. We brought our, our chairs out. Chairs. And we might have um, a little yeah, glass, a glass of wine. Of wine. Well, I mean, look, we're gonna have one sunset. Yeah, so we're gonna be here for a couple days and uh, we've got some work we need to do, um, some editing to do, and also some work to the van. We bought a couple of um, things uh, that we want to upgrade. So we're gonna take care of that tomorrow. I think the weather is supposed to be like really nice tomorrow, like 30, feels like 35, I think tomorrow. So we'll definitely enjoy that, get some work done, and also just enjoy, you know, this beautiful park. And we've already been productive, babe, because we've already done two loads of laundry. And we um, we received our replacement Starlink parts, oh. and our Starlink is working perfect. We uh, got shipped a new router and a new cable, and I installed them both, and uh, everything came back online right away, and uh, our speeds are like, super great considering uh, we're in a provincial park and there is like a lot of tree covering and all of that kind of stuff so we're very happy with that
we have now been at the park for um, two nights and we're just packing up this morning, getting ready to leave. But I thought I would show you what the facilities look like at the provincial parks. Um, they're somewhat typical. They would just range from newer, like this facility appears to be a newer one, um, to your older models. So where we shower when we stay, there's five uh, shower stalls here. Uh, one including an accessible one. Just see if one is open here to show you. Okay, so yes, you get your typical shower stall button, a little spot for your soap, and then this front part, which is a bench hook and for your clothes and a little shelf and garbage. So cleaned daily um, in peak season, I believe they are. Uh, twice a day, you usually see them hosing out the showers and cleaning them down. Um, so then also there is a full woman's washroom. I'm just gonna take a peek in here. Okay, we're good. These ones are fairly new. So you've got all your sinks, stalls, of course, flush toilets and hooks there. Um, this is a fairly new facility again, nice and clean, stainless sinks. And then very important for us who are like sort of living the camping life and constantly on the road uh, is the laundromat. So most um, campgrounds will have a laundry facility at one, at least one of their comfort stations. So in here we've got actually two, um, four, a mosquito. We've got four dryers and these two are washers. Uh, they are $3 per load. So, and then like actually really nice facility for folding your laundry and everything. So I did, oh goodness, I think I did four loads of laundry while we've been here. Um, I did take advantage of the dryers for our towels, but I also hung out with some of our stuff. And the men's washroom is on the other side. So that is what a typical provincial park facility looks like. Um, very clean and especially when they're newer, like this one, they just seem even cleaner. So we're gonna continue packing up. Uh, we're out of here today and our road trip to Cap continues. Okay, we have dumped our tanks, we've filled our fresh water, we've left the campsite, and we're off on part two of the trip up north to Capus Casing. And about six hours to get us to Capus Casing today of driving. Um, but of course, we'll have some little stops along the way um, if there's anything of interest. It's a beautiful drive, so we'll show you some scenery. Anyway, let's for now enjoy our coffee and we'll catch up with you later. A moose spotting. We pulled over and we're running back. There was two big ones. After our moose sighting, um, well I did a wardrobe change because it's quite warm and beautiful out, we are stopped here at in Tomogamy, Ontario, so that's just north of North Bay. There is a fire tower here and it's open to the public to be able to climb and there's also a bunch of hikes around here. So I'm not sure if you can see the tower there in the background. We are gonna walk up the trail and we are gonna climb the tower. Mitch has the drone up right now, so we're getting some cool drone shots of the area. Um, but there are, there's um, other trails around here as well. If you don't wanna necessarily climb the tower or you just wanna do some nature trails, those are all available. There's different trails. Um, we're just doing the tower today. This is just a quick stop to stretch our legs. Um, wow, the deer flies are, there are little savages around here, but I had a couple chunks taken out of me. But yeah, there's several trails all around here. Caribou Mountain and White Bear Forest. Anyway, 
lovely area up here in Tobogamy. There's also a forest fire museum. Doesn't look open today, so we will not be doing that either. This is just a lookout platform um, at the base of the tower, but the views from here are pretty good. They're awesome. There's the town of Tomogamy and there's Highway 11 heading west over there. The moose that we saw, what was that? Maybe five kilometers back mm, out of yeah. town? Mm -hmm. Wasn't far at all. So that was, that pretty was awesome fun. to see the moose. I know. I think now um, we need to start climbing. All right, so Uncle Google gave us some answers here. So the original fire tower was built um, in 1910, just a few meters uh, from the current uh, tower. And then in the late 1930s, it was demolished and a steel tower was built in its place. And this one is 85 feet tall. Okay, so now the straight up stairs have become a spiral staircase at this point. I can't believe this is only 85 feet. However, because we're perched on top of a hill and looking way down, it definitely feels like more than 85 feet. Oh Lord, we've come to the last stairs and the last set of okay, stairs are a ladder. All right. The wind is definitely um, blowing up here and you can feel the top of the towers swing slightly. Just a little bit. In the Just breeze. But look at the views. always. I think it's probably time to walk back down and I think we need to make ourselves some brunch. Perspective on the last <laughs> bit of the climb here at the tower in Tomogamy. One of the fun things about traveling up north, if you've ever done this route along Highway 11, there are some very quirky roadside sculptures yeah. and statues of different kinds. Um, we are up here now in... Earlton. And this is one of my favorites. This is Earl. <laughs> Earl of Earlton. So Earl is a 19 foot high bison, 27 feet long, and he's been here for almost 40 years. But we discovered something else cool. We discovered a courtesy campground. So they have three sites that have water and electricity. That's on iOverlander. We did, Mitch did check it and it is on that app that we have talked about um, for finding boondocking spots. So another good one. All right. Okay, we've made it to Cochrane, two hours from Cap. No, like maybe an hour and 15 minutes from Cap. Oh, okay. Oh, we're okay. we're uh, almost there, home stretch. Okay, home stretch, home stretch. And so we're in Cochrane, this is as far north as we go. We take the turn now and head west to Cap's Casing. Yeah, Cochrane is actually a cool little town. Um, I think it's only like maybe 5,000 people or so. Um, but as you can see, there's a giant polar bear behind us. Um, and Cochrane has the world's only uh, polar bear habitat that is... Um, it's like completely dedicated only to the care of the polar bears.
so we arrived in campus casing sort of somewhat yesterday because we're actually camping what are we 20 kilometers yeah, yeah about 20 kilometers east of campus casing at uh, remy lake uh campground so we arrived there we set up and uh this is the next day and now we're heading into campus casing we find the best things to do in cap are your outdoorsy things so if you love four wheeling fishing hunting, hunting up north cap is casing that is definitely the place to go we're going to enjoy camping by the lake and what else so it's been great we've been able to uh, visit with some family last night uh, saw my parents my two brothers two sister-in-laws all of the nieces and nephews uh, it's been fantastic it has and we're going to continue that all weekend long hanging out with everybody just lots of family time and a little bit of filming here and there. Oh, and we do have a really exciting event um, that we're going to be doing uh, tonight. It's Radio Bingo. And that's something that my family does every Saturday. And we're going to participate. We have our own bingo dabbers, believe it or not. We're professionals now. We're professionals. So the old train station here in Capus Casing is now the visitor center. Not sure what the summer hours are. Right now it is only open during the week. Also can't seem to figure out when the museum is open. But yeah, it's a cool place to come, learn a little history. Very interesting, I had no idea that there was like a POW camp um, back in the First World War here. So a little dark history there. So the museum, um, the train museum of Capus Casing is not open right now. It's open in the summers. It's too bad because Mitch's grandfather apparently donated some artifacts and we wanted to see them. Um, so we might have to see them when we come back later in the summer. Also, if you're camping, a free dumping station right here at the visitor center and Hello. a free potable water top up. Which is fantastic. Yeah. The rest of the week was spent having fun with our family. Jen and I learned to ride segways around the campground, we played bingo, had fires, and lots of laughs all week.